In the end, banks are great lobbyists. Banks are, uh, in, in essence, when we leverage this, 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 this economy and when we protect our, our economy, the first infusion of cash that we give is always to the lenders because they, they have the best mechanism to getting money out into the system. So there's a symbiotic relationship between the federal government, the state government, and the banks that, that they will um, acquiesce to their needs over time. So there may be a short-term outcry, but the long-term effect will always be that the banks have to work through their bad assets. So while COVID-19 is, is on the front page of the paper, behind the scenes, you're going to see banks gearing up to figure out exactly what their priority enforcements are going to be, and then what their secondary enforcements are going to be, so on and so forth. One of the interesting things that I've gotten a lot of inquiries about is from bankers asking for referrals to people that understand distressed assets. So they're already anticipating this situation. Um, a lot of the folks that I knew that worked in distressed assets now 10 years ago, 11 years ago in, in the last downturn moved out of distressed assets three or four years later. Because there weren't any. There weren't right. any, right? Exactly. And, and so there is a dearth of experience right now at a banks dealing with not just distressed assets, but the quantity of distressed assets that this type of economy can, can present. Now, let's look at LA, for example, with the moratorium on rents on multifamily. Yeah. Well, there's a moratorium, but those rents still, the way the rules are, are written, have to be paid back within a year for unpaid rents. So there's a lot of confusion in the marketplace. I think the front page of the LA Times has an article today about it. Mm -hmm. But at some point, those landlords will have to pay mortgages. And if they don't, those banks are going to have to enforce those loans.